Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Could I do that? Well, anyway. uh, hello, everybody. How are you? We'll be here until uh, midnight uh, Eastern time. Uh, I don't know why we do two hours every night because when I did like an hour and forty uh, hour and fifteen minutes the other night for New Year's, I, I got more listeners on one show than I've gotten in a long, long time. Just on one showing on Facebook. So who knows? You know, maybe I should do a shorter show. Maybe that that would make your uh, interest in the program better. I have no guest tonight. It's just me and you. And uh, wait a minute, I got a whole bunch of items here too. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, let me see here. I don't know what, what do I need. Uh, this I don't. This I have to save over here. That's my appointment for my blood test on Monday. I just found out that my doctor uh, he ordered up the PSA test, right? You know, which is a normal is the is the test for uh, for prostate cancer, okay, and um, uh, he also ordered up of to get the free PSA. And uh, yeah, uh, and what's the free PSA? Uh, it's one that doesn't cost you any money. No, it's a it's a different kind of PSA. It's a percentage of your PSA that is not bound to proteins. Ready for that? So if you have 25% or better, your chances of having cancer are minimal. Um, so I now have to worry about two numbers, the number of the PSA and the number, uh, the percentage on the, on the free PSA. And I don't know why he ordered up the free PSA, except maybe he just figured, ah, you know, I'm, I'm moving up a little bit, and he just liked to make sure that there's nothing else going on there, you know. But anyway, so I have to do this blood test on Monday, and I have I have just been a nervous wreck, you know. Uh, uh, why? I have no idea. The worst that could have happened is I have cancer, and they have to take the prostate out. And I have to put a catheter in my penis, and I won't be able to uh, pee in my pants for months to come. Ask Phil. Phil. Phil went through it. Phil says he's okay now, though. That it, everything's, it's not all working right, but it's working, it's not leaking. <laughs> you know, I, I, it, 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 what happens every week uh, when we go to Costco or every now and then when we go to Costco or when girlfriend comes with me, she immediately heads for the Depends diapers and then at the top of her voice, and you've seen the video of it, yells out, hey, Alex, you need your Depends, don't you? And uh, we all have a good laugh at that. Well, is she a while back? I don't know what happened, but she, her bladder became very loose, and uh, she would just pee from laughing and things like that. So for a, a couple of weeks, she had to wear those things. She finally she doesn't wear them anymore. She's fine, but something was going on. I can't remember what. So uh, I would hate to get to the point where I have to use them. And then will she yell out, hey, Alex, don't forget your Depends. And I will say, well, thank you very much, because if I had forgotten, I'd be peeing my pants. All right. So, I don't know. This is the kind of comedy that a guy my age does. You know, I'm just sitting around here waiting to die. That's all this is about. You know, this is... Uh, uh, the treadmill to oblivion, as Oscar Levant, a great pianist and comedian, once uh, called it. Uh, yeah, he had a book called uh, Treadmill to Oblivion. And uh, anyway, so I, 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 so I had this test on Monday, and I am just, you know, beside myself on it. Because today I looked, and he said, get the free PSA. And then I looked it up, and they say, well, doctors ask to get a free PSA when they when they feel that the number is going up a little bit and they want to make sure that nothing that you don't have cancer so uh i'm thinking is he holding something back from me he seemed to be very 
positive about my tests, and he looked inside and used his, uh, his magic wand to look at me, this is uh, sonogram, and uh, all he saw was calcium deposits. So, I don't know. I don't know. So, what, what am I going to do? So, girlfriends had to put up with this for the last couple of weeks. You know, me every five minutes going, do you think I've got cancer? So we'll know. I mean, I'll do the show tomorrow night, and the next show I'll do will be Tuesday night, and by then I should know what the results of the test were because they usually come back in a day. So what the hell, you know? Mm. Maybe it'll go down, you know? It could go up, but then if the, if the uh, 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 free PSA is at 25% or more, then I'm, I'm home free even though it went up. So, you know, who knows? I'll just... I'll just get along singing a song side by side um okay there's a story tonight i want to talk about something and I've, I've talked about this before but i really I, I, today i was thinking about it and i just i got madder and madder and madder about it okay let me tell you this story that came in tonight i was going to do this anyway but then this story came in and i said well this is a good lead in to what i've got to say uh, the current season of a National Geographic Channel series has been put on hold with, cables, uh, with, the, with cable channels saying today that new episodes of the show will not air until an investigation is completed, until allegations against the show's host are completed. Now, what show do you think it is? And I, when I saw this, I went, oh, my fucking God. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting sick of this. Uh, well, the show is Star Talk, and its star is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now, I've had Neil on my radio show when I was at Sirius, and I love the guy. I mean, the guy is just the best. Uh, I mean, he makes science so wonderful and terrific and, and, and fun and uh, makes it uh, make sense to people. He does a great job, all right? And I think the world of him. And all of a sudden, I read this thing. So now he is being accused of it, all right? And it says that last December, well, it says uh, AP reports a prominent, the prominent astrophysicist and popular television personality is accused of sexual misconduct. What does that mean? Well, anyway, last December, National Geographic Networks and Fox said they would examine claims. Fox, they're going to examine. Fox is going to examine it because Fox runs Neil deGrasse Tyson's Cosmos, which is going to go up for another. I think they already shot a whole new series on it, and said so they would examine claims that Tyson behaved in a sexually inappropriate manner. Toward two women, the story reports. Tyson was the host of Cosmos, Possible Worlds on Fox in 2014, and a new edition of the series is set to air this year on National Geographic. Well, Tyson has denied an, accu the, an accusation that he groped a woman and denied making sexual advances towards a production assistant at his home, the report adds. He says he will cooperate fully with what he called an impartial investigation. Now, I get very mad at this because, you know, it used to be that guys would rape women and women would then say, he raped me and nobody would believe them. And that was a terrible time. And the whole nature of that was terrible. But isn't it just as terrible that a person can be accused of something and then not be able to, he has to prove his innocence rather than them prove his guilt and then there is no court of law. It is just, hey, our lawyers found this to be true. Or our lawyers and our findings, we found these claims to have merit. And a guy's life is ruined. Because somebody, I don't know, wanted to get even with somebody. Maybe, I mean, maybe he did this stuff. But if what they say he did is so minor... You know, uh, he groped a woman. Okay, did she get over it? I mean, uh, groped a woman. What does that mean exactly? Um, boy, I don't know. Uh, and then he made uh, sexual advances towards a production assistant at his home. Well, didn't that used to be called coming on to somebody? I mean, 
God knows, uh, I, you know, I mean, y- you make an advance towards somebody hoping that the advance will be reciprocated. But just because you make the advance doesn't mean the advance in and of itself is of a sexual nature. So, I mean, I just, I, I just find that this sort of thing is getting a bit out of hand. And uh, I, last night, was talking about this, and I, I then thought I'd, I'd expand on what I was saying. You've got a problem here. And the problem, well, okay, let's go back to when I was a kid. What does that have to do with this, Alex? You'll see. When I was a kid, uh, and I've talked about, I've, I've told this story before. Um, one of the things that informed my life, it informed my opinion about things, was what, what I saw as a 15-year-old. My father was going to go to City Hall in San Francisco to protest the existence or the hearings that were being held in San Francisco by the House Un-American Activity Subcommittee. Now, this was a subcommittee that would go from town to town. It was like a circus. And they would bring people up in front of the committee and say, are you now or have you ever been a member of the, uh, of the, uh, of the Communist Party? And then you would say, I refuse to testify under the grounds that, it, uh, uh, that I, you know, I, I, I should not be asked that kind of question. Uh, and they, they went from town to town ruining people's lives. They're down in Hollywood, they, you know, you remember the Holly, you heard about the Hollywood 10? Those were 10 writers. Uh, who were considered to be communists, who then were, wound up going to jail because they refused to testify, and they refused to turn over names of other people they knew were communists, and uh, they you know, and it was it was a terrible, terrible thing. And do not mix this up with the McCarthy hearings, which were an entirely different thing. This was a part of that period but it was not part of what we call the McCarthy hearings. The McCarthy hearings were simply hearings uh, trying to see if there were communists inside the military and inside the United States government. Uh, and uh, that was the McCarthy hearings. These were the House Un-American Activity Subcommittee hearings, which were pretty much uh, the same thing, but dealing with, in most cases, show business. And uh, my father decided that this was a terrible thing. And my father was a... I was what I call a red diaper baby uh, in that he was really a pinko, but he wasn't a communist and never joined the Communist Party. And one time I asked him, Dad, did you ever belong to the Communist Party? And he said, well, I was asked to join. This was back in the 30s. This was right after the Depression. And the idea of communism to a lot of people who were starving sounded like a pretty good idea. And uh, he said, I, you know, I was asked to join, and I didn't join. And I said, why? He said, because I felt that the uh, uh, communism was basically, if, if I joined the Communist Party, I'd be helping the Soviet Union. I'd be r- really helping somebody else. And, and what I wanted in this country was more just more socialistic programs and things like that. So I never joined, he said, because I didn't see that... Uh, it was a, a movement that was positive for America, okay? Uh, but he was a pinko. I mean, he, was a, a, he would fight for causes and so on. And so he went down to uh, City Hall, and he said, you want to come with me? And I was 15 at the time, and I said, sure, I'll go with you. And he, we go down, and all these people are out front, and they're all, you know, protesting and doing whatever, and I decided, I said, Dad, can I just go up there and go inside and see what's happening? And he says, sure. He says, I'll be out here when you're through. So I go up to this uh, big room that I guess was used as a courtroom in most cases, and the hearings were taking place. And I uh, just sat there and watched uh, as the people would come up and they would say to them, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And they would say, I refuse to testify on the grounds that uh, you don't have the right to ask me that question or to question my, my, uh, my loyalty to this country. And uh, it was one person after another. And finally, 
the guy comes up, and I know the name. He's the host of a morning radio show that I listen to every morning called The San Francisco Story, and I can't remember his name right now. But it was a, a show in which every morning he would tell another story about San Francisco and about the history of San Francisco, whether it was the coal rush or whatever. And it was a great show, and I loved it. And as somebody who, I guess, eventually wound up in radio, I suppose listening to that somewhat informed what I later became in broadcasting and learning to tell a story or whatever. And uh, they brought him up there. And I said, what's he doing here? Wow, there are stars uh, here. And I went, uh, okay, all right. Um, let's listen to what he has to say. And they said, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And he said, I refuse to testify on the grounds that uh, you have not a right to question my loyalty to this country. And uh, they said, okay, next. And that was it. And I went, wow, I got to see my favorite radio guy. I'll tune in tomorrow morning and see what he has to say, if he has to say anything about this. So I, uh, <laughs> I tune in the next morning, and he's not there. And I tune in the next morning, he's not there either. He's never there again. He lost his job. And he couldn't work anywhere else because why? He refused to answer that question. Now, that committee never came up with any proof that he had been a member of the Communist Party. They didn't, this was not a court of law. And yet, this guy was found guilty of a crime that was only insinuated at. But because he was a principled person, he didn't say, look, no, I never was a member of the Communist Party. And, you know, if he was, say, back in the 30s, what was the harm? You know, you joined it and then you moved on with your life. Or you did it because some woman belonged to it and you wanted to get laid, you know? It's like Zero Mostel in the front where he says, I just, she had big tits, I, you know, and so I went to these meetings with her. Um, so this was something you may have done years earlier, and yet now you are being called to account for it. Uh, you may have changed your entire thinking on stuff. But on the other hand, there's probably some reason why you may have been kind of interested in it was because you believed in what America was and the justice of America. And a lot of people considered these hearings to be very un-American, even though they called them the House Un-American Activities Subcommittee. Um, so this guy never worked again, as far as I know. Uh, and there were a lot of people across the country in movies and everything else uh, that didn't work either. If you want to see a whole bunch of them finally working again, go see the movie that Woody Allen was in. He didn't write it, and he didn't direct it, but it's called The Front. And in it were all actors and writers who had been blacklisted. And, uh, you know, Zero Mostel was blacklisted. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great movie about that period of time and about the injustice of it. So when this whole Me Too thing started to happen, you know, I, I have always believed, okay, let me just start off by saying that I've always believed in treating women with grace and dignity and decency. Uh, I never pushed myself on a woman. Uh, I never groped a woman. That wasn't what I was, and that isn't what my father taught me to be, okay? Uh, so uh, I've never done anything like that. But, you know, when you're growing up, you're, you're, you're with a bunch of guys, uh, and it's a whole ethic that's created among your little social group. And while I found it wrong, a lot of guys just felt, hey, this is the way things are. You know, women like you to grope them, or women like you to come on to them, or, uh, or be aggressive towards them. And um, um, they did that sort of thing because of the group dynamic, the group pressure, what have you. And as years went on, of course, they didn't do that anymore. They grew up. They, they became decent human beings. And, uh, you know, so what's happening now is much like being called to account because you were a communist in the 30s that because 20, 25 years ago you had uh, 
pushed yourself on some woman, something you might not do now, you are being called to account for it, and not only are you being called to account for it, you are accused of it, and as a result, your life's work is taken away from you. Now look at look at um, uh, Tyson here, um, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, who knows when it happened, why it happened, or the severity of what happened. But what it looks like is pretty tame stuff, okay? If it's true. But the problem is that much like those House on american Activity subcommittee hearings, it doesn't have to be true. All you have to do is ask the question, and this person isn't working anymore. Come on. You know, I, this is the new McCarthyism. We have to be more careful about how we do this sort of thing. Yes, I think that if a person did something terrible to another human being, they should be held to account for it, and they should suffer the consequences. But we don't do that simply by insinuation or by accusation. We do that by proving it as well. And in a lot of these cases, these things aren't proven. You know, I, I got to tell you, I'm not a, a big fan of Kevin Spacey, and I'm sure he's a creep. I've heard he is, uh, and uh, not particularly a nice guy. Uh, and yet, because of that, uh, I, I will give him the benefit of the doubt until the trial is over, okay? Uh, and I would still like, I wouldn't mind seeing him act again. I just think that the these are all pure accusations against Kevin Spacey. And now, of course, there is a legal accusation happening. But up until now, all it's been is, is just accusation. Then there is a case of our dear friend uh, Louis C.K. Uh, nice guy, by the way. Good family man. Uh, I always liked Louis. Uh, met him on a couple of occasions. He did my show on a couple of occasions. And I really enjoyed him. Uh, he supposedly said to a bunch of women in a room one night, do you mind if I pull my penis out? This was something that he, I understand he kind of did a lot as a joke, not as a sexual thing, but as a joke. And uh, none of these women in the room, by the way, said, uh, no, don't pull it out. I would be very upset if you pulled it out, which, in which case he probably wouldn't have pulled it out. But nobody said, ah, no, no. They just stood there and watched as he pulled his penis out. Well, that happened five, ten years ago. And now his career is ruined. And wh why is it ruined? Because rather than fight it, he said, yes, I did it, and it was wrong of me at the time, and I not, don't do that kind of thing anymore, and uh, I'm sorry. Hey, case closed. You know, this was another time when you figured this kind of behavior wasn't wrong. You should know it's wrong, but you didn't know it was wrong. Nobody was telling you it was wrong, right? Uh, and so you, you, you did it, um, and you're sorry for it. Well, the problem is he apologized for it, and then nobody said, okay, Louie, you know, you apologized for it, Hey, it happened quite a few years ago. Uh, you're a bigger person than that now, uh, and uh, we'll forgive you. Or we will say that is enough of a, a mea culpa, as it were. But no, he lost his the movie that came out. They wouldn't release. Uh, he lost all his TV jobs. Uh, he, you know, he's he, ha having to play clubs out in Long Island at one o'clock in the morning and uh, why because he did admit his failings and he did say I'm sorry and you would have thought in some more civilized world that would be the beginning of saying well that's very good of you and we're happy you did that and uh, maybe this is the beginning of your redemption all right but we don't believe in redemption. And, and, and we do believe in just simply accusing somebody of something and then holding him to account for it without the definite proof that it even happened. 
And in the case of, uh, of Tyson here, of, of uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's saying it's just not true. He said he, he would cooperate with everybody who's investigating it. He denied the accusation that he groped a woman, and he denied making sexual advances towards a production assistant. Now, I've got a question that I have to ask, and this is a, an important question, and that is, what's the difference between this term sexual advances towards a production assistant and just coming on to somebody and and you know you know i've come on to women you know i've, I've at least let them know that i was interested is that a sexual advance or is that just saying hey i'm available um it's i just think that we are, we're 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 too close to it. It's resonating too closely for me to what went on with the House Un-American Activities Subcommittee and the accusations against people because they might have been a communist at one time. Uh, and I just I don't know. I just uh, the, 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 because that one situation when I was a kid still resonates with me. I can still see the room. I can still see the people in that room. One of the people in that room was my fa one of my favorite uh, artists in San Francisco. His name was Wolo. He did children's books. And uh, he wasn't accused of anything. He was just there watching it. And I, so, I, again, another personality I really knew and cared about. But I then started to, you know, i got to tell you the final story in all this. My father uh, takes me to the uh, Hungry Eye. I was then 18, and you could get into the Hungry Eye, and they had comedians there like Mort Saul and Bill Cosby and Phyllis Diller. and a uh, Great, great comedy club run by a guy by the name of Enrico Banducci. And uh, as we're sitting down to watch the show going on, um, uh, the show goes on, and he leans over to me, and he says, see that spotlight up there? I said, yeah. He says, you know who's running it? I said, no. He said, he was a former a big writer in Hollywood. And he was one of the unfriendly ten. And he refused to testify. And now he's running a spotlight at the hungry eye. Okay, folks. I, you know, to me, it's very similar to what Me Too is doing. Me Too was a movement that was definitely needed. It was a movement that now has been sidetracked by witch hunting. And um, uh, I, I just think that you have to be careful when you accuse anybody of anything because you're going to ruin their lives. And if that's your desire, fine, so be it. But know what you're doing and know what the past was and how this tore our country apart at one time. And when people say to me, Alex, you know, we're living in terrible times right now, I go, no. I got to say that back there in the 50s when we had that whole communist witch hunt thing going on, that was about as bad as we've ever gotten in this country. This is about as far away as we've gotten from being Americans. And I don't want to see that happen again. Anyway, I think I will open up the Skype lines now. I, I managed to talk for a half hour uh, when I thought I could, had nothing to say, but apparently I did have something to say. And, uh, you know, I would love to hear from you. But uh, I hope N Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to be okay and that uh, you're not going to have to, you know, uh, uh, wait a minute, I'm trying to do something here and I'm can't figure out what to do. I, you know, when I don't do something for a couple of weeks, uh, I, I have to figure out how to do them again. Anyway, we're opening up our Skype lines. I just opened them. Uh, it takes about, takes about at least a minute for people to realize that I've gone to the Skype lines. And then it takes another minute or so for them to be able to dial it. By the way, if, if you want to dial it the easy way, you know, we, I, I redid the, uh, the GabNet site, uh, made it even terser and better and more accessible. And uh, there is a button there. And all you have to do is press that button and it'll get you, turn you on to Skype and you'll be able to, uh, to you know, do the, uh, the thing. Hey, there's Phil. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Phil. How are you? 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you uh, now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Uh, never been a member of the Communist Party, but I might do it just to piss you off. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there is a Communist Party anymore, but... Uh, yeah, they're in a, they're in a, uh, a one-flight walk-up in, in Berkeley, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah they, they ran somebody for president, Harold Stassen. I think no, used to no, run. no. He didn't run on the Communist Party. No, uh, no. no? Uh, yeah. Who who ran the, on the Communist well, Party? There was, year? there was there was a thing called, for... uh, there was a party called the Progressive Party, and yeah. it, it was kind of the front for the Communist Party. And I think uh, Henry Wallace, who had been Vice President of the United Stand, States, ran on the uh, on the, uh, with them. By the oh. way, speaking of Henry Wallace, here's Charlie yeah. Wallace. Yeah. yeah, and he's not a communist. No, he's not a communist. <laughs> no. Uh, but uh, so anyway, so uh, uh, yes, uh, Jeff. So is Wallace also somebody who was a vice president? Yeah, yeah. Henry Wallace. Henry Wallace. So that's why I said Henry Wallace. And he ran. Oh, he I'm ran. Uh, I did go to a meeting of the, of, of the Progressive Party because when I was visiting my grandmother, and grandfather in the Bronx, uh, I saw the sign saying there's a meeting down in the basement. So again, I'm the kid. I got to go to meetings. I don't know. Those were the days when parents didn't care where their kids went. You know, kids did things. We I, I audited a uh, class at uh, Brooklyn College, an economics class. Yeah. And uh, well, you, didn't, uh, let me, I, you didn't, I, let me, didn't let me finish the story. Oh. Okay. So I go down to see what this meeting is. It's a meeting for Henry Wallace for president. It's the Progressive Party is holding a, a get together, and it's it's a Communist Party. So yes, I have been to a member. I have been to a meeting of the Communist Party, but I think I was like seven at the time. Well, it's uh, good enough. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, at the uh, I Brooklyn I, College, yeah. I, I was approached to join the JDL. And uh, and I did the, under a that, false name. That's the Jewish Defense League, right? Yeah, uh, and that was in 1970, maybe. So uh, Meyer Kahani and all those guys were still running around. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, all I'm saying is that uh, you know it was. Uh, um, I don't, you know, I just, I just, I, I just, anytime I see what I consider to be the, the, feeling of the whole communist witch hunt thing happening it bothers me and that's why the whole me too movement bothers me because especially and look look at neil degrasse tyson he shouldn't have to not be on the air while they're investigating he should be on while they're investigating and exactly you know and then they can come out with what they find out and if they don't like what he did they can fire him okay but in the meantime he should still work yeah. You know, but everybody is afraid of liability. Uh, you know, our world is ruled by attorneys that are looking to sue and looking to, uh, you know, no, even if no, you're no, right, no, you're it, wrong what because it, it costs. What look it, at your suit. No, that has nothing to do with, with suit. It has nothing to do with that at all. They're not worried about being sued. They're worried about the court of public opinion that if they don't look to be like they are c coming down on somebody who's been accused of uh, let me get my face out of the way of, uh, of uh, our uh, friend uh, Rob Alfano, who just called. There we go. We'll get rid of my... There we go. Now I'm down in the corner. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, it, 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 they're doing it because they just want to look good in the court of public opinion. They don't give a shit about, you know, the fact that somebody might have groped somebody, you know? So. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, they also have these uh, uh, rules, uh, employment, rules of employment about uh, sexual harassment and things like that. And so that might dictate that if someone's accused, they have to, uh, you know, well, lay them off. Accusation should not be enough, you know. Uh, uh, by the way, hello, Rob, and who is this on the phone? It's Schmooty. Hey, hi there, Schmooty. You know, I'm I good, how are you? How come I always call when it's... <laughs> Stupid sexual harassment stuff. Well, I mean, you know, we because why not? You know. Now has uh, has not? Alex ever groped you? Oh, and, I groped uh, her no. like you. Uh, uh, no, well, you know, when we were together, yes, but you know, when we would go out, he was an absolute gentleman. I never walked curbside. He would open the door for me. No, he was always a gentleman. Yeah, a real charmer. Yeah, a real charmer. And then as she got in the car, I would goose her. 
you know, so. It was, <laughs> but No, uh, what I used to do is when he'd get out to check the mail, I'd scoot his seat up real close to the steering wheel, and then I'd scoot mine up so it wouldn't look too uh, suspicious. And I'd get in. And I then watch him it. try and get in between the seat and the steering wheel. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, 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 but we, yeah, she, we, we had a lot of fun together. Um, we had farting contests. She was a, you were yep. like, you were like a guy, you know, yeah. that I was hanging out with, you know, the same kind of thing I would do with a guy I was doing with you. Yeah. Well, not, we were so I don't, rude. what? I said, we were so rude. You were so rude. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how you, did you see? I put up your our Christmas picture again, our Christmas card. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. It's on my That's my, my favorite. Page. And now they're all twenty three and twenty four. Yeah. Really? You know what we should do is yeah. if I ever come out to California, we should go back, retake that picture, but with the with same people, with the same kids. Yes. You know. Uh, Absolutely. Maybe add a couple more. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just those three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would be funny. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway. No, you know, I agree with you on this Me Too thing. Um, it is turning into a witch hunt. You, If you even say anything in jest to the wrong person, mm -hmm. it's devastating. Well, you know, like, for instance, let me ask you. You, you, work, you worked at UPS. I don't know if you're still with them on any level. Uh, but no. you, you work for UPS as, as a woman driver. Okay. Uh, did you ever get problems with that? Did you were you ever, you know, hassled, or did you know how to just handle it? Well, actually, I was a uh, I was a manager inside the warehouse, and uh, yeah. no, you know, I could dish it out as much, you know, as I could take it. Um, but when there were serious issues, UPS, I mean, took it. Seriously, and not only were men fired, but women were fired. Wow. Okay. So they they always took that seriously, even back then, and this was years and years ago. Yes, I mean, um, at least in the Oakland building, they did. I can't, I you know, I can't talk for any other buildings because I'm sure it depends on the management, um, the upper management that you have in the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, were you there for the buy uh, when it, when a, uh, the employees got the stock uh, deal yeah. uh, at, at that point where uh, it was a pretty good deal to work there? And uh, I guess they yeah. Gave you oh, okay. Yeah, some people well, like you did here's very the, well. Yeah. Um, well, the worst thing we could have done was gone public with our stock because after that. Um, it was always about the bottom line. And the reason I left the company is because, think, you know, they were starting to cheat. It was There were some operations that were turning into the whole Enron situation. They were fudging numbers, and I actually went to corporate about some stuff, and some um, high-ranking uh, management people lost their job because of it. Wow. wow. Do you still have some of that stock? Yeah. Yeah. That was a good plan. Yeah. I mean, I'll be I'll be fifty five in August. Yeah. Oh, fuck fifty five. <laughs> hey, I, I, I hey, I always I always went out with the young chicks. Uh, yes. <laughs> I just turned seventy nine, kiddo. My mom uh, asked about you because I went up there for the holidays, and my mom was uh, asking about you. How old are they now? My mom will be seventy nine in February. Yeah. And my dad is 83. Wow. Wow. Yep. Okay. Well, you know, nothing like going out with somebody whose mother's the same age you are. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, but what else did I do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, Rob, what do you, uh, let me ask Rob here. Uh, what do you think about what we're talking about? I don't know. I think it's a, it's a, I was, you know, I listened to your monologue and uh, I agree with some of it. And then part of it, I say, you know, it's just for so many years, it was all one way, sort of like the whole, you know, affirmative action thing mm -hmm. was in the 70s. Right. And so there's this overcorrection, maybe. Well, while it, everybody right yeah. now is looking for, you know, for their day in court, if you will. The women are all looking for. So I don't know. I, I 
it, I think it'll settle at some point. It has to settle at well, some point. Well, is 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 the uh, is justice an overcorrection, or it, you know, I mean, if what was happening was wrong, do we go completely the other way and do something else that's wrong? That's what usually happens: is the yeah. pendulum swings uh, very far before it comes to the center. Yeah, and, you know, it, it all reminds me of that uh, show, Mad Men. You know, and uh, and you you look at that. It was, I guess, staged in the, what the fifties, sixties, mm -hmm. and uh, you saw how the women were treated, and they weren't given promotions. And uh, e even today, you know, they're they're saying that there's a there's a big gap, a gender gap, <clears throat> in pay and in uh, promotions and so forth, in uh, in uh, in the well, business you, in the you, workplace. You know, you know what I heard the other day though uh, was a story about uh, the Rock is doing a movie called Jungle Cruise, which is another Disney movie based on a ride at Disney World, right? Mm -hmm. And it's called Jungle Cruise. And his co-star is Emily Blunt. Well, he's making like $40 million to do the film, and she's getting a buck 30. And they You cannot all, compare. They, I know, I know, but they're all <clears throat> complaining. Emily Blunt should get as much as The Rock is getting. But bullshit. But it's The Rock that they're going to go to see. Uh, you know, I mean, I can't no, think of no. No, here, here's up. the term. Here's the term they use in Hollywood. The Rock can open a film. Okay. Yeah. In other words, you can put his name on a marquee, and it can be a menu from Denny's, and people will go to see it. Right. You know. <clears throat> Whereas Emily Blunt has to do a damn great picture for anybody to go see it. She's a good actress, but she ain't worth the same as The Rock. Right. And, and this is something that's completely lost on people. Now, for instance, even in your business, uh, there's uh, two two disc jockeys. One of them gets uh, a, a, a one salary, and another one gets another. Why? Because <clears throat> one is uh, one brings in more uh, revenue. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you know. So why shouldn't The Rock make more? And I'm sure that if I uh, made a movie with Meryl Streep. And we had equal billing. Meryl's going to make many millions more than I make because she's the star. You know, she has that star status. And in, the case, in, of, in the case of The Rock, you know, even I will go to see any movie The Rock is in. Mainly yeah. because when you go to see it, he sells that film. He makes the film. It, somehow it works. You know, it's entertaining. So... Uh, you know, this whole thing, oh, Emily Blunt isn't getting the same amount of money. Bullshit, you know. Of course she's not she getting what she can. She gets what the market will bear. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know, it, it's not like she's working on an assembly line, assembling the same part right. Uh, right. for the same amount of time and, right. and, and doing the same amount of production. Right. Uh, you know, that's that's one thing. It's but, like sports uh, athletes. Well, they don't all make the well, same Well, money. that movie with Kevin Spacey where they had to redo all the scenes with Kevin Spacey in it so they could mm -hmm. uh, get him out of the film, and they yeah. had to do it within three weeks. Well, they brought everybody back to do the scenes they had to do. One of them was Mark Wahlberg, and another one was, I can't remember who was second in that film. Uh, I'm trying to remember now, but a woman. And they were griping that the woman only got, got $100,000 to come back, where Wahlberg got something like $2 million. And they said, it's not equal. Well, the thing was, they signed contracts ahead of time that if they were reshoots, he would get this much, and her agent got her that much. Well, you know. I, had a, I had a cousin when I was married to Susan that was an MGM negotiator. And uh, there was uh, that movie Flashdance. Mm -hmm. uh, most of those people were unknown. His job at that time was to negotiate with all of the actors and actresses that if there was going to be a sequel or uh, anything else, that they had an agreement ahead of time of what they were going to get paid. And believe me, it wasn't very much because nobody had ever heard of any of those actors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so yeah, that's what they do. And, uh, you know, a deal's a deal. You know, so, I mean, uh, you know, but uh, uh, Shmoody, uh, uh, you know, it's too bad you don't have Skype because then we could see you. I know. One of these days I'll have to break down and get it. But you know what? I'm <clears throat> Most of the time when I'm on my computer, you know, sometimes I'm on Facebook, but a lot of times I'll be doing eBay or stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. You, you used to sell on eBay, didn't you? 
Yeah, I'm getting ready to fire it back up because it'll do it for like three or four months. And when I do do that, I pretty much fall off the radar because I'm strictly business. And then um, once I get a bunch of stuff sold, then I come back and everybody sees me again. So now my friends know if I disappear, it's usually because I'm taking care of business. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you want to hear something funny over the summer, you know, my son is a, I'm a DC gal. Sean is a Marvel guy, but you know, I have the whole Batman collection. So as we're watching it, Sean goes, how come all the bad guys have these? He calls them tookers, which is his code word for hookers. And I go, well, yeah, dude, back in the sixties, we were broad. The only things we could do was teach Sunday school or be a teacher, a secretary, or a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I, I hate to say it, but I think the word broad is hilarious. But man, some of my gal friends don't. <laughs> they have no sense of humor. Well, you know my father said about the word broad? This is my father. I always Boy. go back to my father because he's my hero. He used to call Betty Davis. He said, what a broad. And I said, why do you use that term? And he said, well, when I use it, I'm using it to describe a woman who is take charge, you know? Exactly. Uh, yeah, and that yeah. he considered it a very good term, that broad was a, was not just a woman. It was not just a lady. She was a broad, man. She could take care of business, you know? And, lady. Uh, you know, maybe I'm going to be, maybe I'm going to want to be referred to as dame. Oh, um, kind of a British. That's yeah. uh, dated. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was French. Dom is you know Dom. D A M E is is Dom, right? In French, I think. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, so that's where that comes no, from. No, it's ma Madame. 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 So it's yeah. the it's the you know, I think it, it has its <laughs> its. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. so, if you think about it, is not necessarily we we think of it as a con, you know, a a negative connotation, but in a way, it's just a slang term for a woman, yeah. dame. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, well, the Three Stooges use it all the time. Uh, <laughs> but I always liked the term broad, you know, because my father taught me that it was not a bad term, you know. But it, 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 you know, it, it, I often wonder about terms, you know, that. Yeah, at one time I was, uh, I, I used to always refer to lesbians as dykes. And the reason I did it is because I had some lesbians say that it was a perfectly acceptable term. That they said that dyke was, a, uh, was an acceptable term for lesbian, so far as they were concerned. Because it didn't have a negative connotation to it. it was kind Especially of, if they were on bikes. Well, there was a group called Dykes <laughs> on Bikes, you know. Uh, <laughs> But you know, if I if I if I if I used it today, I suppose it would not be right. But not. But the word queer was no good for a long time, right? If you called somebody a queer, now it's an acceptable term. Well, it only if you're queer, you know. Oh, is that right? I think so. Isn't the Q in in LGBTQ whatever the answer queer? You're right. You're right. You're right. But then again, you know the thing I always. I'm sure Charlie can attest to what I'm about to say. I've never been able to figure out why I was being told how I was supposed to teach uh, what I was supposed to call black people by an organization called the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you know, uh, are, you, you, are you colored people? Uh, uh, <laughs> and not for about 60 years. And you would have thought that somewhere along the line they would, would have gone, you know, that's really an antiquated saying. By the way, Tony, pay attention. It's an antiquated <laughs> saying. <laughs> it's an antiquated saying. And um, why didn't you change the name of the organization? You know. Cost money to do that. Yeah, it would cost too much money. <laughs> yeah. They'd have to buy new stationery. I don't know, you know. Uh, Signs on the buildings. Yeah. Who can lay the coffee down? Yeah. Give you a break. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Ah. yeah. Pay through the nose. But, uh, you know, I mean, I just, uh, but I, as I say, I saw the story about uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and the fact that they're not, I mean, of all the people, all right? You know, come on. 
My, as a science geek, it, he's my science hero. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was with you, you know, listening to you before, and then you started going into the holy, the whole Louis C.K. thing, right? Yeah. And you were saying, you know, so he, he took his penis out. I mean, he didn't know it was wrong. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, 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 no. He didn't. He he did not just take his penis out. He asked yeah. beforehand yeah. Oh, if so they minded if he still... would take out his penis, and none of the women said no. Well, I, you know what? I was they listening were in shock, to probably. over the over the <laughs> break. Over the break, I woke up one morning and I turned on the radio, uh, Sirius, and Howard had a S- Silverman. What's her name? Um, Sarah, Silverman. Sarah, Silverman. Sarah Silverman on and she, you know Louis C.K. came up it was an old interview from when it first blew up yeah. and she said that we were very close and he used to just you know say can I take my penis out and she was like I thought it was weird but you know he's Louis and yeah I mean I you know I don't know I I just think the whole thing is strange I mean you brought up not to do that but now, of course, I mean, I was, of course, I you're not, unless you're four, that. unless you're four years old, Probably. you say, like, you know, me, you have one of these, yeah. right? Exactly. I mean, you just know you don't do that. Look, right. it may be a stunted growth on his part, it, but the fact was that he yeah. would always, and even Sarah Silverman said it, would ask permission first. That yes, does, you doesn't know, matter. Which gave you the opportunity to say, "Well, I don't. I'm not signing up for this. I'll, I'll get back to you later after you're through yeah, showing I mean, yourself." Yeah, let me say it. Is it like a running joke, though? Maybe, maybe that's just. A, he's probably. Did you is it acceptable to go into a room of people and ask if it's okay to pull your penis? Well, well okay. To all you guys here, uh, and of course, uh, uh, Schmoody can't say it, but do you mind if I pull my penis out? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, well then, then I will Yeah, you know, I can see it because I'm watching it on YouTube, Alex. Yeah, yeah but you've already seen it before anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm proposing any secrets here for you, you know. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, the fact is that, you know, that, uh, of course, and you all said, no, I don't want you to pull your penis out. So I'm not going to pull my penis out because you said no. I think he should do it. <laughs> You're a sick Double puppy. Dog. <laughs> Here. Double dog dare you. <laughs> Double dog dare you. Well, in that case. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did a double dog dare once, man. It was it was a dare, and I said no, and then the guy said, I double dog dare you, and I said, that's it. Got to do it, you know. That's enough. That's yeah, yes, Charlie, you got your hand up. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to comment on the Neil deGrasse Tyson, because I don't know if y'all know it, but I'm, I was trained in astrophysics, and oh, so he's right. kind of a hero of mine. Yeah. And <laughs> he, um, the accusations against him are just so minor. Yeah, I mean, two of the two of the women basically just said he touched their hand or something. It, he never even touched any sexual part of their body. It wasn't the grope? The grope was in graduate school at the University of Texas when he was a graduate student there. The grope was there, and this was a woman he had a sexual relationship with at the time that she says he groped her. her. Yeah, I mean, that's like how many times have I put my hand on my wife's butt? Well. We have we have somebody here on this panel tonight who we can't see, but I have groped her. I, right? That I have I groped? Did I grope you? He's a groper. I mean, that's completely Wait. different from going up to a total stranger or some yeah. girl that you just saw. Ka- Kathleen, did I ever grope you? Who me? Well, yeah. So, <laughs> and and did you mind it? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> well, then maybe you could. You no, know, did I deck you? No, no, <laughs> and not one of them. Not one of them said that when he said no, he kept doing it. The minute they said no, fine, they were he just okay. I, I tried, you know, and then he went well, on. By, well, by also, the here's the question What is the difference between uh, sexually what, what was it? What was the term that was used? Hold on a second, I gotta go back and get the story. Uh, se- yeah, sexual, uh, um, hold on. Charlie, what year was Neil deGrasse in uh, in uh, college or in the in the 
uh, did, he, did you say it was? He got his school? master's degree in 1983 from the University of Texas. I was already gone by then. Okay, so that would have been after the sexual revolution yeah. of the 60s. And, oh yeah, uh, he made uh, the it disco he, crazy. It said he made sexual advances towards a production assistant. Now, what constitutes he a held sexual? Her hand. Well, what, oh, what, what what constitutes a sexual, sexual advance? Well, no, but a oh, sexual okay. advance would be. Hey, it it, it 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 depends on what the person who thinks that was a sexual advance considers a sexual advance. It could have been something as simple as, uh, "Hey, you want to come back to my place later?" Wait a minute! Don't you have to touch a a, a, a part of the body that no, would be it, considered it, a sexual? No, it, right. That's it, what I always the thought. The way they describe it here is that he made a sexual advance towards her. It didn't say he groped her. This is not the one that was groped. That's not the one. Yeah, yeah. Well, but they made was it a sexual so advance? Was it a sexual advance ver uh, a verbal thing? It doesn't like, say. Uh, it. Did he say to her, "Hey, you know, you're hot"? Well, how did else he... do you? Do you want to come back and see my science yeah, class? Do you... Do you... Can I pull out my you... penis? <laughs> you do a little research. I can imagine this. I'd love to be a fly in that room. <laughs> yeah. What's going on here? You got me yeah, yes, Jeff. Yes, Jeff has yes. a comment here. Many years ago. Yeah. I went to Italy with my wife. Yeah. And her sister. Sister's the younger of, of, of the two. Mm -hmm. And we went to Vinci because I was very interested in Da Vinci and all that. Ufuzi and, Gallery. Yeah. And so we go in there and we're walking around. And it's not a small, small museum at that time. But it was, it was great. And we're just walking around and this and that. And Betsy comes over to Pam and she goes, this old guy over there just pinched my ass. And Pam says, why did he pinch mine? You know, I, I, I Alex, you know, I, I should, I, the Susan, next, yeah, uh, in Italy, uh, yeah. uh, that, and Susan had a great body. I mean, she she was beautiful. Was it beautiful? Was it Susan? No, I think it was Ronnie that it happened. No, I I, I think it was Susan. Uh, she, and she had she had a body that killed. And you know, uh, the so no, I this, remember this the story. story the that story. You said no, her this, ass hurt. No, yeah. I'm talking about it was Ronnie that yeah? it happened oh. to. We were in Italy, at we and she had to go to into the uh, uh, railroad station because she wanted to mail a letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she went, and I waited in the car, and she comes back, and she gets in the car, and she goes, God, is my ass hurting? And I said, why? She said, I walked through, it's like it was a, it was like a, a, a gauntlet. <laughs> you know, I walked from one end of the station to the other, and they kept pinching my ass. I wonder if they don't do, do that today. Huh? Well, I said, I, it's it's interesting. Do the, for that? Do yeah, the, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, for or they man. still do that today. There's no Me Too movement there. My grandfather used to pinch my cheek when I was younger. But yeah, still, yeah, yeah. I hit that in my yeah. family. Now, on the other hand, when I was in Europe with uh, with Schmoody, uh, nobody ever pinched her ass because if they did, she would have decked them. <laughs> you know, like a Batman. This is a woman I went with. No, I had a lot of uh, guys come up to me and say "Sprechen Sie Deutsch." Did they really? Well, you look. Yeah, yeah you look Germanic. Oh really? Well, to begin with, she was yeah. she was the opposite of every woman I ever considered my type. Okay, she was tall. I like him short. She was blonde. I like him brunette. And yet, uh, we had a great relationship. You know. Yep. Uh, uh, I, uh, but all your girlfriends hated me. Yeah. Why was that? Cause you, I don't know. You were always... Well, I guess because I was the one, so it, let's, you know, like I felt kind of bad for you, like around uh, Valentine's Day. Yeah. You know, you'd have to take him out to lunch or whatever, but I was the one that got the evening. That's right. When you'd go away, who took care of the apartment? I did. Right. Who drove the cars? I did. Right. Right. And, and who, it was probably more of a trust thing you knew i was with you because of you not because you were alex bennett once i got to know you you knew for a fact yeah well that I, I was a solid person that was there for you i was always very suspicious of women who uh would come on to me because i was uh, saying to myself are they coming on to me because they find me attractive or are they coming on to me because of who i am and right. uh, I always trusted you that way. I never felt that I had to worry about you saying, hey, guess who I'm going out with, you know. 
Nope. Uh, and there were a lot of people that had no idea on my end mm -hmm. that I remember we were live in San Ramon. And uh, so you do your gig and then it would go to commercial and you'd come straight to me and we'd talk and stuff. And then you it was time to go back on the air. You'd go back on the air. Well, like about the third time, there were a bunch of UPS drivers from San Ramon that were there. And so you go back on stage and they come to me and they go, Kath, are you the Kathleen? And I said, yes. Shh. And they were like, holy crap. <laughs> holy crap. Yeah. 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 Uh, but. Uh, you know, when I get people ask me, what, how can you stand to be around him? He's such an a-hole, blah, blah, blah. And I'd say, do you realize his job is to entertain? So when you hear Alex Bennett. And I go, and that's not even his name. He's entertaining. That's what he gets paid to do. Right. I said, the person I'm with is totally different. And that's true. And some people cannot separate the star from the person, the human. Yeah. And I was one of them that couldn't. Uh, but anyway. Uh, Very funny. Yeah. Uh, Have you met that other guy? What? I met, met that other guy. Well, I used to actually. It's I tough. sometimes in the early days, I used to refer to my on-air persona as that guy. That guy. Yeah, That's yeah. It. Uh, well, but but after a while, you kind of become that that person. But you know, maybe a nicer version of them. Uh, yeah, but uh, I didn't really play the asshole on the radio, did I, Phil? Uh, no, you you were you had a persona, and you know it's uh, you know that's not who you were, but yeah. uh, you know the strange thing was you know I I've known you for a long time, uh, and when I met you in New York it was a very short short meeting, but mm -hmm. uh, I always called you Alex, and uh, I'm over at your place in Sausalito, and I call you Alex, and, and this is when we first uh, maybe in 1980, and uh, Susan says, well, his friends call him Ben. And uh, then, you know, I just kept calling you Alex. And then eventually you said, well, maybe I'll just call myself Alex. You know? Uh, well, no, you know because, something? You know who came up with the best way of referring to me? Was Ronnie. Uh, yeah. She used to refer to me as Bennett. Yeah. Uh, so that when we were in a group of people, if it was like relatives, and I said, she said Bennett, it was Bennett. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. But if but, it was, but if I, we were in a room full of people that uh, knew me professionally, she was calling me lovably by my last name. So Bennett did this and Bennett did that. So she found the way to do it. She she finessed yeah. the whole thing very nicely. Yeah. But you know, your first name is Bennett. Yes. <laughs> so I mean, you could use that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, and, and actually, you even hid your personality. You wore a hat. You wore glasses. Uh, you didn't want people to know what you looked like. And you were pretty anonymous when uh, you first came to San Francisco. Yeah. By the way, let's uh, let uh, we have we have a death, another death today. You know, yesterday we had a, had three deaths in one day mm -hmm. of famous people: Daryl Dragon, um, Bob Einstein. And uh, who's the other one I'm thinking of? Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, Mean Gene Okerlund. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the WW, what was then the WWF and is now the WWE. Uh, do you know why they changed it from the WWF? They were sued. Uh, the World Something they, Federation. They were sued Wildlife by the World Wildlife, Wildlife Federation. Federation. Yeah, but they, yeah. they were sued by the, the uh, uh, World Wildlife World Federation. Wildlife. Federation. And they won, so they changed it to WWE. Anyway, he died. You know they all died yesterday? They all died at 76. Yeah. What? They were all the same age, yeah. Yeah, all the same age. And Ed Bear, WMCA. Yeah, Ed Bear. Ed right. Bear from WMCA died. He, he died. Now, I don't think I knew Ed Bear. Uh, or he was a weekender. He was a weekender at WMCA. Yeah. Uh, they went on to CBS FM and... And then he was a long time, I think, at WHUD. Um, he, in what's he, that? Had, he had to be older than me, though. Ed Bear, how old was he? Because uh, I was I was pretty young when I was working at WMCA. In fact, I think yeah, in, those was in those days, I was 29 and the youngest person working on the air in New York, if you can believe that. So you're 79, Ed was 
what, four years, uh, three years, uh, no, four years, uh, no, three years, 82. So he was three years older than you. Wow. Son of a bitch. Well, anyway, so we got another death. This guy, most of you never heard of. His name was Herb Ellis. Uh, he was an actor, and he created a series with Jack Webb called Dragnet. Uh, oh. And he died in uh, San Gabriel, California. He was 97. Uh, uh, he uh, Dragnet premiered in 1952 following an airing of a pilot in late 1951. Ellis appeared opposite Webb in the early episodes of the series, including playing Officer Frank Smith, until Ben Alexander took over the role. I think Ben Alexander didn't take over the role until it went to television. Uh, because it was a radio show, I think, before it was a yeah, television yeah. show. In yeah. addition to... Ed there was 82. Okay. Uh, in addition to Dragnet, Ellis appeared on various other radio and TV series, including Dangerous Assignment, Escape, Tales of the Texas Rangers, and The New Adventures of Nero Wolf. Uh, but he... Uh, uh, he was around. He was a, he was a, one of the guys who created uh, Dragnet, and yet you always think that he, uh, that that Jack Webb was the sole creator of that, because I think Webb kind of did uh, a uh, uh, what do you call it, the reframing of history, and that's a Dragnet. Uh, uh, it's the DVD <laughs> set. Now, which <laughs> run is that? Is that the original? That's the original one? Dragnet with. Uh, the original. God, what was his name? Uh, Jack he Webb. just said it. Jack, Jack Webb. Webb. Jack Webb. Uh, Jack Webb. Yeah. Right. And that was, they were in black and white, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because that they. Was a they, Desi Lu production? No. No. no it was no. Mark, Mark Seven. I thought it was. It was a Mark Seven was. production. Now, you remember Mark the hand seven. with the with the, with yeah. the, with the I, anvil? I used to thing. love the Dragnet TV show. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, when it hit the hammer comes at the end of the well, show. Well, uh, I, I, I went. Uh, I had a love-hate relationship with the Dragnet shows. I love the original run, the black and white run. It, 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 he brought he brought a whole new style to television, drama, and so on and so forth. It, it, when you get to the color ones, they start becoming very campy and very funny. I mean, yeah. nobody loves more than to sit around and watch the Blue Boy episode of Dragnet where the guy is on LSD. And it is just, the whole thing is so campy and so naive. Was and, that the same producer that did Sea Hunt? Zeb? No, 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 no. Dragnet was Jack Webb. No, no, Zeb, who was Zeb, the producer? Zeb, that was Ziv TV. They did a whole bunch of other shows. but they Yeah, did. Ziv, I think, also did. No, the, they did not. The, they did the not. The Bridges, no? The, yeah, they did Sea Hunt. But they, sea Hunt, yeah. But they didn't do Dragnet. No, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, yes, Jeff. I always loved the radio version. I thought those were the best. I don't know why, but... Well, if you go back to San Francisco radio, the precursor to Dragnet was a show that Jack Webb did in San Francisco called Pat Novak for Hire. Yes, I think I heard it once or twice. Yeah, and, and they did the same kind of way of, of natural speaking, I guess, was the best way right. you could... That Wasn't there a of, Highway Patrol also? He gave you words. Highway Patrol was Broderick Crawford. Broderick Crawford, yeah. 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 <laughs> See, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Join the club. Yeah, but you, you, you're not that old. You were probably not born yet when Bro Broderick Crawford came out in the Highway Patrol. No, sure I, I was. I watched it on TV. Highway Patrol. Yeah, it might have been reruns, though, for me. Yeah. Well, you know what my son is watching right now is he's watching the old Twilight zone oh there was an, uh, i watched it new okay. years i love yeah. those day of it on sci-fi channel it's awesome yeah yes yeah. yeah my son loves all the old shows here, here, he watched here, a bunch here, of the here. old dennis the menace from night <laughs> here's my favorite yeah. to serve people is a cookbook <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> sometimes I'm they working. were Huh? I'm working for a customer right now with the last name of Wilson, and I just, I'm dying to go, hey, Mr. Wilson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be you just said it with the old, old great Scott. Well, well, how, 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 yeah. how old's your kid now? He just turned 13. Wow. wow. Going to have him bar In mitzvah? November, you <laughs> you going to have him bar mitzvah? And almost as tall as I am. Really? 
Yep. Wow. Because you were no shorty. Yeah, I started taking him to the gym. How tall were you? I forget now. Were you, you were six, right? Yeah. Yeah. Six feet tall. Yep. Because my dad was six five. Yeah. Wow. Your dad was tall, wasn't he? I forgot that. Yeah. Yeah, my real dad. And then my stepdad's like six two. Wow. Wow. So you come from a tall family. What can I say? Yep. You know? Uh, anyway. Except that his shoe size went from a 10 and a half to a 13 over the summer. 13 quadruple E. Because he got oh, really? uh, water retention? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I told him if we ever lose the brakes on the car, just open the door and put your feet out. <laughs> Now, last night, the name came up on this program, and so I had there an item came through today about it, uh, and the name was Pamela Adlin. Now, if yeah. you don't know that name, she's the star of a show called Better Things, which I think is a wonderful show. Uh, but it was produced by Louis C.K., and many of the episodes directed by Louis C.K., and written by Louis mm -hmm. C.K. and Pamela well, she Adlin. She was on a Louis C.K. show. Huh? What? She she was uh, on his TV oh, yeah, yeah, show. Yeah, she, she was, was also on, he was also on she was also on the show, uh, yeah. but now he's no longer the producer of the show, and she threw him to the wolves. And oh. uh, but she kept her deal over at FX, so she's going into her third season, and she's got as uh, uh, guests on the show Matthew Broderick and Sharon Stone. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, let's see, anybody else that's uh, very famous? Doug Jones, who I don't know if you're familiar with Doug Jones. If I told you he was the monster in the shape of water, then you would say, oh, that's Doug Jones? You know, uh, he, he, he always plays people that you, you'll never recognize him because he's always playing people, always wearing masks. And, and, and uh, uh, he's on, uh, he's on the, the new Star Trek Discovery, too, again. Completely covered, face completely covered, but he's got this weird body that's uh, very, very strange. But anyway, that's some of the little news items that I have. Let's talk about what is just getting to be silly stuff. And that, of course, is... Pelosi. Huh? Pelosi. What, what, what about Pelosi. Well, she's Speaker uh, of uh, of the House now. Yeah. And, you know, she's talking silly stuff. What, 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 hey, one more facelift, she'll have a beard. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> you got that from me. That's funny. <laughs> Anyway, uh, uh, no, but forget about the whole Pelosi factor. Just this whole government shutdown. I mean, over what? You won't give me my wall. You won't give yep. me my wall. What, what were you holding up there, Jeff? A gavel. Oh, uh, uh, a gavel. Oh, okay. You won't give me my wall. I'm going to hold my breath till you give me my wall. I think he should. I hope he does. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I think, you know, he promised, he, you know, he made promises when he campaigned. He promised Mexico would pay for it. Well, right. you know, they will. He'll send them a bill. You know, yeah. Okay. I mean, he made a lot of promises like that, uh, that uh, well, Mexico was going to pay for the bill. And he, 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 so ingrained that in our minds he would at the rallies go and we're going to build the wall who's going to pay for it and the audience would yell out they will or mexico and uh and now he says he wants us to pay for it wait a minute what is this uh, when when did we suddenly get the bill isn't it supposed to be going south yeah isn't it as big a part of the promise yeah was the promise yeah. that america wasn't going to pay for it yeah yeah well, I, I still think that you know america gave mexico uh, uh, and uh, Guatemala and a couple of other countries. I think they gave him ten million, ten billion dollars, uh, and I have a feeling that some of that's going to go back to pay for the wall. Uh, well, that, then let some, that happen. Yeah, there's some the underhanded that deal. Happen. No, you know? there's no deal. He he wants us to to, to give him five billion dollars. 
Well, Mexico, you know, like, and, and we gave him we gave him one point How? we gave him one point eight, I think, during the last year, and he never used it. Yeah, well, uh, you know, how uh, how do you think they're going to have those shovel-ready jobs out there? You know, well, I mean, this whole day, it, 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 his whole his yeah his whole approach to this thing is mm -hmm. shovel-ready. Uh, he just wants a couple of no-show jobs. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> he he, you know what's funny is he thinks all of this is like when he was running real estate. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know. And that every deal he's uh, making is like a real estate deal. And it's, it, I'm sorry, you're not dealing with a bunch of real estate people. You're dealing with the Congress, for crying out government. loud. You <laughs> know? Well, uh, originally he wanted $45 billion to build this wall. Now he's found other ways of constructing it where he can do it for a lot less money. You know, the so steel. Get, that's a deal for Mexico. Well, it's like Pelosi yeah. said. He's, 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 settled, he's, he's settled for he's beaded promised. curtains. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe the Chinese will take some of that steel they can't sell us because of the tariffs, and uh, and they'll build a wall. Yeah. Yeah. Steel and my recycled bottles sound swell. <laughs> it's a waste of money. It's not going to work. Uh, they use the recycled bottles instead of Const Constantina wire. They they break the glass and they glue it to the top of the wall. Yeah. It makes it tough to get over. Yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's just this this whole thing is is getting laughable. And then the latest press conferences and the speeches he's making are just getting ridiculous. That you know that uh, what what did he say about uh, Mattis? Uh, that uh, oh yeah, what did he say? He wouldn't do something he wanted him to do or something. You know. Uh, well, your your gal Warren Pocahontas. Oh, I'm going to be my gal. Oh, she's, <laughs> she is agreeing. She's agreeing with Trump over the pullout in Syria. You know, uh, so uh, uh, I agree with Trump on pulling out Syria. Well, I do too. We weren't supposed to be there, and uh, you know, all these years we've been in, uh, getting into these uh, issues with all these other countries, whether it was Vietnam or uh, you know, uh, and and. Uh, at least, at least we weren't in Grenada. Oh yeah, I guess we were. <laughs> and uh, you know, Panama. It doesn't doesn't matter. And here he's keeping his promise, saying, "Hey, I don't. I didn't want to be in that war. I just wanted to go after ISIS." And now he wants to pull his two thousand troops out. And uh, you know, uh, everybody's up in arms. This is this is what we wanted since nineteen sixty eight. You know, we and what do and, you mean since nineteen sixty eight? But he he uh, when up he, when Obama pulled out he he criticized him the same for the same thing he's doing. No, he criticized Obama for putting a red line in the sand and then not sticking up to it. See, Obama said that he, if they no, did no no he he no, said he did he, him for yeah, pulling out. yeah he didn't he 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 uh, he made uh, yep. Obama the creator of ISIS. Yeah, he pulling out. It. Yeah, he, uh, he out. was that over Iraq. For pulling out, uh, yeah. uh, because for, what for Obama doing exactly did was exactly what he's doing. Uh, not necessarily, because oh, he had a he, he had a oh, mission. Because it's Trump. No, he had a mission in Syria, and the mission was to eradicate ISIS and keep them. Uh, and we from, all know ISIS is not gone. His best yeah. intelligence well, folks tell him ISIS is well, is, is is underground, but they, well, they're not gone. If you pull out, not what is pulling, the vacuum going to create? Right, but he said he's not pulling out. Uh, immediately, uh, that they're going to finish the job, but uh, you know that's this, not what he said. He well, wanted it, to pull it's out what he said after he met with uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Lindsey Graham. Uh, Lindsey Graham. Is, so why did Mattis quit? He quit over that. Uh, well, we think he quit over that. That might have been the straw that broke the camel's back. But well, I'm sure <laughs> it was. He's dealing with a, a, a megalomaniac. Uh, all right. So, uh, you know, the, but I think uh, he and Mattis had, had uh, he, he had not seen eye to eye with many of his advisors. And, uh, but let's you know, face it, Phil, he, live, he, he lives in this delusionary world in yeah, which, like, for so, instance, huh? one statement he made was, and the American public agrees with this shutdown. Yeah, <laughs> a, a, a lot of them do. Yeah, no, a lot of do. them do, but not enough to make it a majority of people agree with him. Not even close to a majority. Well, that's okay. It's the close to a vote. majority doesn't want the wall either. Yeah, uh, that, that's that's what I hear from the people that don't want the wall. 
you know, but, uh, Hey, we'll see in 2020. We'll see if, uh, they, that's what they want or if it's not what they want, uh, they'll have a chance to, to vote them out. Yeah. Then we'll see. Then, then, but you well, know, it depends is, on who, two, it depends upon who the Democrats put up. Now, when you talk yeah. about Elizabeth Warren, uh, she can beat the shit out of Trump. Uh, yeah. and no, I don't With think her tomahawk. so. I don't think so. <laughs> I think Trump's not going to be able to run in 2020. Uh, we, we, uh, we're about, we're not about, only, he won't be in jail, but his reputation no. will be completely destroyed. We're a, a month, maybe two months away from the Mueller report. Yeah. yeah. And that is not going to be good. No, it's not, not going to be good. You know, you're jumping to conclusions. I mean, the same way you do with me, too. Phil, Phil, we have everybody around him going to prison. He's not These guys, but they're going to prison for things that they did years before they were involved with Trump. You know, uh, because uh, uh, what's his name was involved with the Russians. Uh, uh, Roger Stone was a partner of Manafort. Uh, you know these guys were all. Uh, these are all his. All his. Uh, yeah, these are. This is his circle. This is. These his are the ring. people he trusted. He's there for three months. No, Manafort, Manafort was with Trump long before he came yeah. into that. In, into that. He into ran the, the campaign he, for no, three months. No, no, but and he was before that. What and before that, he had a relationship yeah. with Trump, a business relationship. He was involved in in uh, uh, Trump's uh, prop. Pro, uh, you prob. Were, well, that, That's what the guy did. Follow the money yep. with Trump. It's going to go back to Moscow. All yep. right, we'll and see. You know, maybe Mattis might have seen the writing on the wall and said, listen, I'm going to quit because in a couple of months, I don't want to be associated with this whole regime. Well, then they got to get out of here before the ship goes down. I think, I, no, I think Mattis is a very, to begin with, he's known as a very principled guy. And he probably saw that his principles were just being just thrown out the window. And he could not be associated with it any longer. You know, you hired me to be your secretary of defense. Now allow me to make those decisions for you. Otherwise, you know, I don't want to be part of this. And I don't want to be part of this when it, it, when it falls apart, I mean, does you the look, Secretary of Defense make decisions? You look at that or does White House. He make recommendations. He makes recommendations, and no, many times, if you're makes good, decisions in Trump's White House. Well, they, no, I'm not even talking about that. I'm no, what about what happened is if, if say say you were Obama, and you yeah. know that you don't know as much about the military as you, the guy you hired to be your Secretary of Defense. What you do is he advises you on what the best course of action would be to take, and you usually take his advice because that's why you brought him into the room. Okay. Uh, but Trump said he knew more it, than right? the generals. There you go. He knows more about yeah. fill in the blank than anybody else. Yeah. Fill in the <laughs> blank. Yeah. yeah, you're going to tell me this guy who went to a military academy knows how to run an army? Oh. Yeah, he had, bone, he had bone spurs in his feet. He couldn't get in the military. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he wanted to. Oh, he temporary oh. bone spurs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he seems to be. He seems to be walking, or, or he seems yeah, to be, right. he seems to be walking okay, or waddling okay. Yeah. Uh, it's because he had tiny, tiny hands. Tiny, tiny hands. Uh, yeah, he's got small pee pee too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> don't show us yours. Yeah, yeah. Trump's the one ripping it out. That would be funny. <laughs> Before he resigns, he whips his penis out. That would be great. Yeah. Oh my might... God, it's small. Well, listen. Here's a guy who groped somebody. He said he could grope somebody. Yeah, you're been... right. He did. He it. admitted oh, he it. Could shoot somebody. Billy Bushy told. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was popping Tic Tacs. Remember? By the way, the shoot it? thing was a, was a sub- supposition. The grope thing was. Yeah, I just do this because I'm yeah. famous. Uh, I think we said because I'm famous, you could. Uh, I just go no, up. Oh, he and said grab he them. did it, and he I, got away. You with could it. grab them by the. No, I don't no, think he said could. I grab them by. I just go up to him and grab him by the pussy. That's what he said. That's what he said, Phil. Uh, let me Phil, see if I can find oh, the. Uh, oh, you, know, oh. you don't want to find it, Phil, because you're going to be disappointed. Hey, go ahead. Well, go, go find it. Go, go find, find it. it. Meanwhile, the adults in the room will talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's Adult Swim now. Oh, by the way. Yes. I'm babe. We're babysitting this cat. Okay. 
And I got to tell you, this cat is the most precocious animal that I've ever met in my life. To begin with, you know what the cat's favorite room is to sleep in? The guest room. Oh, he's got his own because room. she knows she's a guest. <laughs> But last That's night I'm in the bathroom surprising. and I've got the I've got the door closed and all of a sudden I hear this clatter going on outside and I don't know what's happening. I'm thinking maybe it's the radiators are exploding or something and there's this boom boom boom. And I open up the door and there's the cat. The cat was knocking to get in. It's oh, nice. You know to sleep. Polite. Cat's amazing. Just amazing. Uh, is that the kitty that's sleeping on the bed yeah. uh, with Marjorie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cute. Yeah, yeah. So if, this is the adult talk? My kitty? <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. Well, I, him by the kitty. Have you found out what he said? <laughs> that's what he said. Have, have you found I, I'm, it? I'm, I'm looking at a New York Times article, and it's uh, reading it on the phone is a little slow. Uh, yeah. But I'll, I'll get there. Well, you know, reading is something that most Trump people have a hard time with. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, uh, I just, I, I, I think that right now it's not a good time for Trump because now that he doesn't have the Congress on his side, and now that they have the subpoena power, this is not going to be a pleasant time for him. Yeah, uh, and he yeah. knows it as well. His uh, taxes are going to come out because oh, Congress has subpoenaed his tax returns. Yeah, yeah. They'll subpoena we don't know his, where the money came from. Yeah, they'll subpoena his tax returns, and they, they can fight it for a while, but eh, it's not going to it's not going to last. You know, I notice you uh, you haven't left Texas yet, uh, Charlie, because you've got a in back of you. There's some kind of thing with a picture of Texas. Oh, on it. I'm Cowboy. still a Dallas Cowboy fan. Your boys are playing Saturday night. <laughs> yep, Saturday night. It's going to be a tough week. Seattle looks tough. Yeah. Yeah, well, Seattle, but they're playing in Texas. Yeah, but now, to play. now you've got the uh, really the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Texas Cowboy cheerleaders. Is that sexist? Uh, yeah, you know, you, there was an I read an article about that recently that you're sa they're saying within the next five to ten years there'll be no more cheerleaders. Really? Um, but yeah, because lots of teams are getting rid of them because of the sexist connotation, the uh, of, of what they you know what they are. It's it's disappearing. Well, yeah. oh, so stupid. Well, it is stupid, but that's the world we live in today. They're gonna have the men doing the cheerleading soon. It's gonna be crazy. All yeah. right, so this whole well, okay, you guys. Here, here, uh, you know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them, Mr. Trump said. It is. It just it's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Quote, grab them by the pussy. You can do can anything. Space. Unquote. Yeah, well, that's, that's man speaking from experience. Yeah. Yeah. He walks through with mirrors on his shoes, probably. Go. Yeah. yeah. You don't even ask permission to kiss them. You just, just kiss them. Right. Just but do it. it you know, you, you, you're taking this. When he did that, uh, that was in 2003, I think. Jesus. And, you know, we, we didn't have the Me Too movement. We didn't have these things. We had the casting couch. And it was. Yeah, well, I got to tell you, Phil, 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 in, Phil. In your industry. The, uh, I, I had a certain amount of notoriety and fame. And I can't say I ever took that opportunity with my notoriety and fame to grab somebody by the pussy. Well, that's because you weren't Donald Trump. You know, I mean, uh, you were a radio guy, you, 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 but, you know, you had offers. I mean, there were people I, you know, I remember you getting things in the mail picture of, of a gal, you know, uh, that that wanted to have sex. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, and do you think it's because uh, you were not a celebrity? You know, yeah, but I didn't grab them by the pussy. Well, this one you did. After no, oh, I mean, after how I was. How many women? How many women were coming out trying to, uh, you know, as part of the beginning of this Me Too movement against the advances that Donald Trump made? Those weren't all accepted, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, agreed upon. Grab them by the pussies or hey, kiss them. When, when I answered the phones at Camel uh, for Alex, the uh, I had women calling and they wanted to meet me. And and Alex specifically said, I'm not going to make you a character that is sought by women because he wanted them all for himself. 
<laughs> That's correct. You know, wait a minute. Now, uh, Schmoody, tell them how you met me. How we, we hooked uh, up. Alex was having a contest. He was looking for a wife, and I wrote in a letter. Uh-huh. And he wrote, and he read the letter over the air, and I happened to be on a surveillance, and we were listening to the Alex Bennett show. And so he reads the letter, and he says, Kathleen, if you're out there, call. And the best thing was the look on my partner's faces, because I turned to them, and I go, hey, Chris Warren, you're going to have to go into his, Warren's car. And they're like, what? And I go, that's my letter he read. I need to call the station. I remember my my partner Chris Snyder almost having a coronary. Were you a she PI? She couldn't believe it. Were you a PI? I was doing security work for UPS. I we we ended up busting a couple people in another building, oh, wow. and so my friends went into the other car, and I called up the station, and, and they go, "How do we know this is you?" And I said, "Big Hooters and Hooters Baby are all capitalized." Bingo, my letter. <laughs> that's how we met. <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah, that's how we met. Yeah. So you know, it was the it was Match dot com on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty much. Uh, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, and uh, you know, it it lasted. How long? How long did we actually go together? About a year, year and a half, something like that. Or was it longer? Um, let's see, we probably went together for like two years, but we were together basically until you left in 2003. So yeah. from October 96 till you left in 2003. Well, that's how long we knew each other, but I mean, actually going with each yeah. other, I think was only a couple it was of like years. like a year and a half, two years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you were with me when I lost my uh, job at, uh, Live 105. And, oh yeah, and we yep. immediately left town and went to Vegas to get away from the press. Yeah, and I remember your smarmy bodyguard wanted was trying to get me to come work for him. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> was his bodyguard was his bodyguard uh, armed? Yes. Ah, so therefore you like guns when uh, <laughs> when you want them, huh? <laughs> well, the reason he had a gun. Was because we would do shows. Small penis? No, we would do these. Uh, <laughs> we would do these uh, shows, these uh, comedy shows. Yeah. Uh, and after we did the comedy shows, we would always get paid in cash. And the reason we got paid in cash is because that's what came th- in through the box office. It c- credit cards weren't a, in, in uh, promiscuously used nope. in those days, and so they would pay us off in cash based on the crowd that we had and so we would have this big wad of money and somebody had to take that and put it in the bank go down and you know you had the night deposit you remember the night deposit you right yeah you night deposit cash yeah sure oh. sure but he had to go take it down and that's he had the gun so that in case somebody tried to rob him you know he so, could. so you didn't just put it on the bed and roll around nude over the money? <laughs> <laughs> you know, come on. <laughs> well, we always did that immediately after a show, Kathleen and I, and then we put the money Then you together. put it in the bank. Then we put it in the bank, you know, once it smelled of stank. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, but th- th- so I, I, that's why I, I, I had a, uh, a bodyguard. Uh, I never, however... Never had the bodyguard look like he was with me. Uh, I because I felt that having a bodyguard and making it look like you had a bodyguard caused more problems than it helped. Yeah. Because people you only had you only had one. Huh? Because then people would challenge it. So he would always walk behind me, and it didn't look like he was with me. Am I right, Kathleen? Didn't I do it that way? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that. And I mean, really, who's gonna come at you if I'm standing next to you? Yeah, forget it. You know, she could take anybody Jeff. in the room, huh? Uh, Jeff has some whipped cream on his nose. I think Jeff has whipped cream on his nose. Where'd you get the whipped cream? <laughs> uh, you're muted, Jeff. Jeff, where'd you get the whipped cream? He's oh, muted. You're, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> um, it's not whipped cream. Oh, it's, uh, I had a bloody nose today. Oh, oh, did wife you... hit you again? Yeah. You maybe need Alex's bodyguard. That's right. <laughs> and so you I'm to, flying out. Yeah, so you had to put a tissue in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, so anyway, so, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we got this whole new Congress coming in. 
uh, and I hope that they they do us proud, that they don't act like assholes. Uh, you know, we should not be assholes just because the last people who owned the apartment were assholes, uh, and uh, we should do right by them. There were uh, 102 women in the new Congress. Really, that many? Yeah. yeah. So what's that? 20 yeah. percent? Yeah. Just about. Uh, it's getting there. You know. Um, uh, Does that include the senators or? or uh, no, in the in the house. In the house, and, it's only 435 House members. So that that's a quarter. Quarter. Yeah. A, a quarter of what? Uh, of uh, the house. A quarter of them abroad. A, qu a quarter of them abroad, says uh, says uh, <laughs> Kathleen. <laughs> what Danes? Dames, yeah, you got yep, them, the chicks, the chicks, and some of them are babes. That too, and, you know, yeah. that too. So, what did you do over uh, over the hol the vacation, uh, uh, Rob? Um, just went to New York for a couple of days. Yeah, uh, just for the eve and Christmas Day. Came back the day after, and then uh, a whole lot of nothing. Just a whole lot did of. Did you relaxing. do anything on New Year's Eve, or did you just stay home? Uh, yeah, the neighbors had a party up the street, and like we did last year, went up went up the street. Yeah, my wife had a you know my wife is uh, she had to be in, at work at four thirty in the morning on New Year's Day, so kind of sucked. Wow, so, what does she do again? Yeah. What's she doing now? She is a dialysis tech. Oh wow, yeah, and you got to yeah. they got to do dialysis on, uh, on on any day, every day, yeah. yeah, every day. Well, they're not open on Sunday, but they're open six days a week. And the good thing about the job, it's only three days a week, but you work insane hours for mm. those three days. That must mm. suck to have kidney problems, you know? Oh, I, I, you know what? I can't imagine having to report five days a week to a building and sit there <sighs> for, what, four hours that you sit there and that machine you're plugged into yeah. that, you know, that's what Very they funny. do. Yes, Jeff. My father was one of those guys. Oh, really? That's... For how many years? I think he survived six years. Wow. Wow. It's, is it a death sentence, or is that can you go on indefinitely? It depends upon the the patient, you know, and and what's going on with your blood and stuff like that. If because you get it, a kidney transplant, she, yeah. she tells she tells me that there are guys in their thirties and forties there. Wow. Yeah. 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 I you know there, there's certain people that can last for a long, long time, and uh, and there's others that can't, and. Uh, Unfortunately, with my dad, it was six days, six years, I should say. And he used to go three days a week. Wow. And, and sometimes at the beginning, it was only like two hours. And then after a while, it was three hours. And then after that, it was four hours, you know, and it was. But he felt better, didn't he? No, not really. He was exhausted. Yeah, um, that's what, yeah, that's what she said there. It's exhausting. You're you're tired. And, well. Is it, well, I guess the solution to it is a kidney transplant, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I guess that's, there's a long waiting list. Right. Really. Maybe. Well, actually, my kidneys are not. My my kidneys are okay, but they're they're cystic. Uh, which is, as I was told by my urologist, is no big deal. You know. Uh, but nevertheless, I don't know if I would be qual would qualify as a kidney donor. Uh, now you you went for the uh, PSA test? No, uh, on Monday? No, no, no. Is that's that? next Monday. Oh, it's next Monday. But they're also doing a free. He's also has on their free PSA as well. well what's a free PSA? Uh, that doesn't cost as it much. It doesn't cost as much. No. <laughs> what it is, you get a PSA test. Okay. Yeah. Then they do a free PSA. Uh, if it, it, it if it's a really low percentage, it's bad. If it's a high percentage, like more than twenty five percent, you probably don't have cancer. Uh, they, it's it's a what they do is if you're like getting into the threes or sometimes four plus, in order to make sure that you either have have a chance of cancer or don't have a chance of cancer before they do any kind of biopsy. They do the free PSA, and I think he's doing it as just a precaution. You haven't had the MRI biopsy where they stick that uh, probe uh, up there and uh, they uh, 
you know, look around. It's a, it's a thing like the size of a soda can. And uh, no. I hadn't had one of no. those. What they did with me is they went in and they snipped. But the, this other kind of way, this one with the soda can, uh, is is supposedly a much more accurate, and uh, you don't have the issues afterwards for a month. Where do they put the soda can? Up, up your, your ass. ass! Yeah, that's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, anyway, uh, so yeah. I don't know why he ordered up the free PSA, but I think it's probably just to be on the safe side, you know. Yeah. But it would, in a lot of people who might have a high PSA, it, it many times can rule out the need for a biopsy because it could rule out that you have uh, you have prostate cancer. Well, even if you did at your age, I wouldn't do anything about it, you know, uh, unless it's extremely aggressive, you know, uh, and yeah, it yeah, doesn't sound yeah. like from the level of. PSA I don't have that any symptoms. Have. What they say about PSA tests is they shouldn't be given to anybody over the age of seventy unless they have symptoms. Right. And I don't have any symptoms at all. Well, so why are you doing you it? Have an, you have BPH. Because, well, everybody has BPH. You know, because my yeah. doctor told me to. You know, yeah. I, I'm telling him this time, if everything's okay, last time. You know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, why he's doing the free PSA, has got, oh, that's got me worried. But he said that he looked at it using the sonogram and everything looked fine. You know, he just found some, what are, uh, calcium deposits or... Uh, <laughs> Uh, some kind of deposits uh, on the prostate, which is you get with age sometimes. And that's what yeah. could be causing the PSA to go up because it has inflammation around it. Uh, mm-hmm. But he, he uh, otherwise, he didn't say he didn't see anything. You know? Hey, I'm looking at a place here online that says free PSA test, $69. No, no. That, now, that, how, how is that free? It's that's <laughs> free money. No, no. That's a free <laughs> PSA <laughs> test. Know. That's where they use it with a Coke can. Yeah, really. <laughs> or a 30-ounce. Well, one of the reasons, also another reason <laughs> they do 40, it is, is sometimes 40. you can have a low PSA, a but, but you can have a low PSA but still have prostate cancer. Yeah. And what the free PSA would do would be to show that up and make it apparent. So I guess, I, you know, a doctor says, I'll order up the free PSA while I'm at it just to make sure you're okay on that end. Did you hear about that other thing? It's a breathalyzer that can tell whether you have cancer or not. I've heard something about that. There are also dogs that can smell dogs you and tell whether yeah. you have cancer or not. Yeah. Hey, my dog keeps licking my face. I figure she knows I'm diabetic and I must be sweet. <laughs> or some, something like that. You know. Yeah. Uh, but, I, uh, you know, I mean, um, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm all worried about it, you know. I, I'm getting all been just absolutely beside myself. That's why I'm telling him this time, no, I'm not doing it again. If it's okay this time, I'm not doing it again. You know, yeah. you can, I'll come by and see you once every six months just so you can get your money, you know, yeah. uh, but I'm not taking a P, a fucking PSA test again. Uh, well, the last thing you want is the biopsy. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, you don't want the biopsy, but if I get a bi, if I were to have a biopsy, big fucking deal. You know. Oh, you, you'll be a big deal. Yeah. No, he, he says he... <laughs> You'll be walking around like you're lighting the loafers for I, about I a month. Said, My well, mother felt bloated, what, what, she said, after that. What, after what? She, how the can she get bloated? She doesn't, she she doesn't have, have a prostate. She, she doesn't have a prostate. Were, you know, Your no, mother's they, a they, man. They did biopsy that the polyp was... <laughs> no, no, that's in her ass. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> she, I don't know why she felt bloated. She said they put something in there. And she felt like her stomach expanded. I don't know. And, and the anyway, the point so it was is, a forty ounce. I got to ask. The point is, my doctor says that he's. I said, I, you know, I don't really want to get a biopsy. He said, well, the biopsy isn't in the cards right now. And oh, I said, he said, but if we were to do it, he says, I, uh, I said, I hear it's painful. He says, I, I, I put people out. He said, I oh, really, just, yeah, yeah. Okay. It only takes about three minutes. Yeah, but he puts people That's out. It? You know. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. you be- and he pushes you outside after the biopsy. Yeah, no, I want to get knocked out too. Right, right. So you know, uh, but Alex, I- do, you, do you use his, uh, your Mickey Mouse watch to test your heart? Uh, yeah, you know what? I had my watch in the other room. I didn't put it on tonight to test my heart. Yeah, I did a uh, did uh, an uh, what a a not an AKG. It's the other thing. EKG. 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 Yeah, I did an EKG with it. I'm fine. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it just what you do is you go onto the uh, phone, 
and you push start for the test and then you put, touch the um, uh, the what do you call it the stem. the stem the stem and just hold it for about 30 seconds and then it comes back and tells you whether you have any fibrillation or anything like that you know it's not it's not a uh, complete you know EKG where they do all kinds of stuff and you got a graph and so on but supposedly I think you can, you can make a copy of the test you just gave yourself and send it to your doctor yeah yeah it doesn't talk like Mickey Mouse. Ho oh, ho, you're gonna die. Well, I wish I had my watch here. I'd let you hear Mickey Mouse talk. Uh, but I That's terrible. Fortunately I guess I put the watch in the other room when I started it up. So uh, you know. Uh, but Mickey talks to me. The problem is sometimes at night I'm trying to go I'm about to go to sleep and I accidentally hit the watch and Mickey goes, It's two oh five. And uh, I'm I'm trying to muffle it because I don't want to wake girlfriend up, you know. Yeah. So, whatever. Anyway, uh, what else? We got about ten minutes here. What do we, anybody got anything they want to bring up? Uh, Phil, uh, I I've been talking all night. Give somebody else a shot. Uh, uh, Charlie, anything you want to bring up? Well, I'm kind of mad at the Democrats for trying to propose this pay go thing in in the House. They're going to hamstring themselves. Before they even get started. What's PAYGO? Well, it's supposedly a, a, a resolution where you cannot have any new program that costs money unless you either have uh, a reduction in some other program or you have new taxes. So you hmm. can't go in, you can't increase the deficit with a new program, you know. Wow. Well, that's good. That's 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 very anti-democrat. Well, did you hear today? There isn't a program that they wouldn't do that. Did you hear today that the uh, the that Trump has raised a deficit by two billion, two trillion dollars? Yeah. In just two years. Yeah. Two uh, trillion dollars. You yeah. know. Uh, well, the big tax I, cut well, how do you? How do you? Just, I want to hear uh, uh, Phil's excuse for that. Okay. Well, you have to prime the pump, you know, and uh, oh, we, had a, if... we had an economy that was in the malaise, uh, you know, 1% uh, GDP. And then, you know, last, uh, the yeah, previous we, quarter, we, we had, had a 4%, we had, we and, had tri- and this one was 3%. Uh, to begin with, we had $2 trillion more in our pocket. And secondly, and most importantly, the sm- stock market was okay. Well, the stock market really, uh, you know, went up and is ups and no, downs. No, no, the mean, stock you know, market yeah, has tanked. More downs now. It has yeah, tanked. Yeah, it's going to gamble, you know. No, yeah, don't, 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 wait, don't say that, that Phil. Don't say that, Phil, down. because your boy says, look how great the stock market is <laughs> under me. And yeah. now we don't hear a word from him. Well, it is great, and it still is. Oh, the stock market up, is uh, great? Uh, yeah, Have you seen it under what? 23,000? Which world of sci-fi are you living in? Huh? Yeah, you know, it was but, falsely raised like the four percent and the three percent by ridiculous tax cuts, yeah. which, well, by the way, are going to expire on us in a few years. Yeah. Well, you know, the the thing is also look at Apple. Apple uh, just took an eight percent hit on their stock, and that yeah. was one of the main reasons that uh, the stock market had gone down. Went down and today, you know today, it's you know today, soft, today, soft today, today Phil. It's the reason it went down today. What about all the other weeks that it's been going down? Oh, I, I, I'm just talking about today. You know that uh, I, I said. And you know, and what? By the way, by the way, why did uh, why did uh, what did Tim Cook say was the reason why? A so China, uh, tariffs, no, China tariffs. No, the China so, tariffs. That means that the tariffs yeah. are working. The tariffs oh, are well, working. Real well. Oh, they're working. Real well. Yeah. Yeah. Working. Yeah. We know and, that. You know, they'll come to the table. Now, I understand uh, uh, that uh, uh, our, there was uh, They're not coming country. to any table, Phil. <laughs> what table yes, are they, they coming will. to? Yes, they will. You mean uh, just like Kim Jong-un was going to come to the table? Yeah. And Kim, he, wants how, a, he wants a second <laughs> sit down. Uh, yeah. How's that, how's that going for him? Yeah, he wants uh, Kim Jong Un wants a second sit down. Yeah, but, he wants a second sit down. Yeah, well, you know, believe anything he says. He's just he, him and Trump are like uh, 
<laughs> butt butter, well, butt and, butter and, and what, uh, what's going on between the north and the south right now, opening up the train lines and opening up all this uh, discussion and, uh, you know, guys jumping across the DMZ. The, the, this is, uh, you know, this is uh, this stuff hasn't happened in 70 years. And uh, it, it's a, it's an opening. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah. we started, we started well, our negotiations one, with China over a ping pong match. <laughs> Come on, really? Yeah. No. Yeah, that is true. That yeah. is true. That is true. Yep. You know why oh the Chinese changed the way they did business? Because they found out that they could play the game better than we do. Mm-hmm. No, no. They had a free. They had a free ride. They they were given a special status. Uh, and uh, oh, okay. now they're that's the reason why the you don't think there's a you know they don't even up. need business from the United States now that yeah, they so you know do you know do you know how, do you know how big world. India is it's bigger than the United States yeah uh, you ever been to India yeah but the but the Chinese like doing business with India yeah well you and know, India does uh, business with the them Chinese, and they'll do business with anybody. But they're doing business. Who will do and, business and, with you know, anybody? We're so afraid of global warming. It's the Chinese that are polluting everything. And, we're not. Polluting. And it's the Chinese who are right. looking for China. ways to solve the problem and to make money out of it. They don't give a shit and to about make, the problem. Oh yes, they do. They they are looking for ways to make money out of uh, out of uh, you know uh, uh, cleaner air and yeah. pol- anti pollution programs well, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, they've got, yeah, in fact, they, they've they gone into the, the whole. In they've gone into the whole solar business, windmills, the whole thing. Yeah, stealing our technology. What do you mean? The wind is our technology? <laughs> no, but uh, solar you know, panels, the sun. And, uh, you know, they've been stealing. Uh, they've been stealing our proprietary uh, uh, technology for Phil, years. Phil, and you, uh, they have no respect for our patents. They have no respect uh, for for anything that you know our intellectual property. Well, and, that is true. I agree with you there. Yeah, but you're you're off on a lot of uh, you know. Well, on a lot Trump, of you know. Trump you're... is standing up to them for the egregious things that they've been doing, uh, and uh, you know, I mean, they're spying on us to to steal our intellectual policy po- property. So you know, I mean, you're worried about the Russians. I don't think the Russians are a problem. That's a smokescreen. It's the Chinese. You don't like. I agree. I have a group of my friends and I are not buying anything sourced or made in China. Good luck. And with we've that. actually done well. Actually, we've done our background, and we're we've found sustainable companies within the U.S. What kind of stuff? And are you that's the about, ones though? we're talking about: clothes, sneakers. You can probably do. Is you electronics, and there's so many things that are made in China. Yeah, do you, that you, you, what kind of? Well, fun? you know, we're. The electronic, you know, I'm one of those people, I'll, lo- I'll use my electronics until they die. I'm not, you know, I have friends, the next Apple phone that comes out, they have to have it. I mean, just the waste of money on that. Not yeah. in China. They're not buying Apple phones. And and you know yep. what? Apple's behind the eight ball when it comes you to You know the why, phone. They're, not mean, buying, why technology... they're not buying Apple phones is because they cost yeah. too much. Well, yeah, I have no Apple anything. <laughs> can't stand well, them I, I like apple stuff but i have no desire to get another phone you know I- unless they come out with a uh, flip phone uh like a clamshell phone that i don't uh, butt dial people you know uh because uh but uh, yeah if they come out with an apple phone that folds like the old nextel uh, you know <laughs> Yeah. Said says the guy who has the iphone 10 <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. the new the new star tech well, anyway, there's the theme song, the familiar uh, theme song, and wow. we've we've just blown another two hours of our lives. How is that, huh? You know, oh, you blew two hours. We blew an hour and a half. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Stein, thank you for being here. Charlie Wallace, thank you. Okay. Phil Meyer, Rob Alfano, and of course uh, our, our uh, good old friend, uh, 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 what's his name. Uh, Tony Magno, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. See him, see him, you can see him, you can see him, you can see him, you can see him. Can see him. And of course, uh, the can. wonderful and attractive Schmoody, an ex-girlfriend of mine. And I'll, who, I'll get Skype all right already. Get Skype so they can see you for crying out loud. Okay, anyway. I will. Hey, listen, all of you, why don't you give them a big wave goodbye and I'll wave back to you. Uh, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizens panel. And uh, that's it for tonight with the citizens panel with the citizens citizens panel thing. Um, 
Let me uh, get rid of them here. Let me get rid of all the uh, callers and get off of the line so that the next program, which is uh, Jack Bishop and the Intersection, uh, can use the Skype lines to talk with you. He'll be here. I uh, hope you'll be joining him as well. Uh, in the meantime, uh, that's it for me tonight. Uh, I'm through. I will be back again uh, tomorrow after Damian Chaplin and the exchange at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>